This is the day the Lord has made. We, we will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as, as in the beginning, so now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. As we commence this service this morning, we are very aware of the effects of the coronavirus throughout the world. And so I ask you now all to join me in prayer for those around the world who are affected by this condition. Lord Jesus Christ, healer and friend, come and care for all of us through the danger and uncertainty of the coronavirus epidemic. To people who are sick, bring healing. To people who are displaced, isolated or cut off from family, friends or work, bring comfort and companionship. Work with the medical staff as they care for the sick and protect them from harm. Give skill and fruitful research to scientists as they search for treatments, prevention and a cure. To public health authorities, give wisdom to decide the best ways to manage both this crisis and our anxieties. When communities are fearful, give a calm spirit and kindness to neighbours and strangers. Through this testing time and through all the risks we face together, teach us once again how we can love one another as you have loved us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout with triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hand moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as Israel did in the wilderness. When your forebears tested me, put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I loathed that generation and said, It is a people who erred in their hearts, and they do not know my ways. Of whom I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. response for the psalm is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for my whole life long. The Lord, Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Lord God, whose blessed Son rose in triumph and set us free, grant us the fullness of life, the life you promised us, that through the Holy Spirit our hearts may possess him whom our eyes cannot see, the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being a king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I named to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see mortals as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of those. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The psalm which we just shared a few moments ago, Psalm 23, 
is the most, most popular of all of the Psalms. It's attributed to the great King David, whose anointing by Samuel we read in our first lesson for this morning. The words of this psalm, written some 3,000 years ago, still echo through the centuries and come to us and offer us comfort, support, and especially in this time of great uncertainty, they also provide us with hope. Of course, the great King David was himself a shepherd, as we heard in our first lesson. He was called from tending the sheep to becoming the one who tended the people of Israel. And so we hear these words, the Lord is my shepherd. Those words, of course, refer to God, refer to the one who created us all, but in a very loving and understanding way, the way that people 3,000 years ago would have understood to have been an image of care, of love, of support. Well, the psalm goes on to say, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Such beautiful images of peace, of provision, of care. He restores my soul. And then the psalm goes on. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Many of us in this time feel as though we are walking through a valley of darkness. Throughout the world, some 10,000 people have died of the coronavirus, and we know that it is in our communities. But we need not fear because God is with us. Through the hands and the care of so many medical workers, God is seeking to resolve this situation and to provide us with protection. And so as we walk through this valley of darkness, we know that God is with us, acting in our best interest. Because the thing that we know most about God is that God is a love, is that God is one who created us out of love and created us to be loved. Well, the psalm continues as it goes on to say, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. All of us in this land have more than enough food, more than enough provisions to last us. We are well cared for. God's provision has seen to this. The farmers throughout the last years have been storing up food and preparing for us. And there is abundance for us to be had. Only yesterday I was at Victoria Market and there was plenty of food there. Food for which we can give thanks because we need not go without. And then finally the psalm concludes. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. There is a promise entailed in that, that yes, we live in the Lord's house in this day and age. We are provided with shelter by God, but even when our life is ended, we are welcomed into God's home. We are welcomed by open arms. We are welcomed by a loving shepherd who is there to guide us through all eternity. There is no more than we can ever ask of God than to provide these things for us 
and to provide us with love and support in our times of need. The Lord be with you. Also with you. say the canticle the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets, God promised to hold to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our foreheads, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And we join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Collect for Ash Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Call it for the fourth Sunday of Lent. Gracious God, in order that we children of earth might discern good from evil, you sent your Son to be a light, to be the light of the world. As the light of, light of Christ shines upon us, may we learn what pleases you and live in truth and goodness through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us now offer our prayers to God. And we begin with a prayer for the whole human family. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. 
that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray at this time for the Church throughout the world. We remember in particular in our prayers the Hong Kong Sengong Hui. We pray for the Archbishop Paul. We pray also for the ministry with the Torres Strait Islands people of Australia. We remember the Archdeaconry of Melbourne. And we pray in particular for the parish of St. Thomas Lang Warren with St. Peter's Hearsdale. And as we pray for our church, we remember also our Archbishop, Philip, and our regional bishop, Geneve. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth, in all truth, with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. And let us pray especially for our own parish family. We pray for those in our parish who feel frightened, who are alone, for those who are shut in, in their homes. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, restore the penitent. Grant us in all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind, within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created, and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service, and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.